Section 2.5, the method of judicious guessing. Before we discuss this section, let us go back to section 2.3. Note that according to this theorem, the general solution of this non-homogeneous equation is the sum of two pieces. Piece number one is the general solution of the corresponding homogeneous equation. Piece number two is a particular solution of the given non-homogeneous equation. Now, if P of T and Q of T are constant functions, if this is a number, and this is a number. We know how to find this portion. It's section 2.2. .2. We use this theorem. There are three cases. In case one, general solution is this. In case two, general solution is this. In case three, general solution is this. So, if P of T and Q of T are numbers, we know how to find this. Question is, how to find a particular solution of this equation? It's exactly what we discuss today. Section 2.5, the method of judicious guessing. Please take a look at this equation. It is non-homogeneous because the right-hand side is not equal to zero. How do you find a particular solution of this equation? Here's an idea. Since the right-hand side of this equation is a polynomial, we guess that a particular solution of this equation is also a polynomial. So, let us try to find a particular solution of this equation as a polynomial of degree two. Question is, how to find a zero, a one, and a two? Here's what we do. Let us replace y here, here, and here by this sign. First derivative of this polynomial is over here. Second derivative of this polynomial is over here. So if y is equal to psi, the left-hand side becomes this. But if psi is a particular solution of this equation, the left-hand side should be equal to the right-hand side. Question is how to find coefficients a0, a1, and a2 such that the left-hand side is identically equal to the right-hand side. Here's what we do. First, let us rewrite this in this way. Let us group together all terms without T. Then uh, let us group together all terms with T to first power. And lastly, let us group together all terms, here we have just one such a term, with t to second power. So if we plug in psi into the left-hand side, the left-hand side becomes this. But the left-hand side should be equal to the right-hand side. It's exactly what is written here. Question is, for which values of a0, a1, and a2, the left-hand side is 
identically equal to the right hand side? The answer is, if this is zero, this is zero, and this is one, the left hand side is indeed identically equal to the right hand side because zero plus zero times t plus one times t square is identically equal to t square. But if this is zero, this is zero, and this is one, we get the following system of linear equations, which is easy to solve. A2 is one. If we replace A2 here by one and move it to the right hand side, A1 is negative two. If we replace A1 by negative two and A2 by one and move it to the right, we get A0 is zero. Very last step, replace A0 by zero, A1 by negative two, A2 by one, the result follows. This is a particular solution of our equation. Questions? Yes, Haju, uh, I, I just got a little lost. Uh, can you go down a little bit? Yes. Yeah, right there, The when you group them, uh, like yes. above, yeah, uh, down, the one below it, uh, how did yes. you get equals to t squared? Excellent question. Remember what is Psi? Psi is a particular solution of our equation. What does it mean, a particular solution? You replace Y here, here, and here by Psi, and the left hand side after all simplifications is identically equal to the right hand side. It's exactly what we have here. We replace y here, here, and here by psi. We simplify, this is the left hand side, it's over here. But the left hand side is supposed to be equal to the right hand side. This is how we come up with this. Did they answer your question? Yes, thank you. And the uh, c equal is not equal to zero means like the coefficient of um, I guess would be a uh, y, right? Well, here we say since c is not equal to zero because we follow these recommendations. But guys, you can skip these recommendations for a moment because we are about to discuss more general recommendations. This is a particular case of this. But you are totally right. C is the coefficient in front of Y. The coefficient in front of Y is one. So C is not equal to zero. Thank you. Other questions? Uh, professor, how did you get the original equation for Psi? The A naught plus A one T plus A two T squared? Well, once again, it's a good question. Remember, we call this section method of judicious guessing. Mm -hmm. We guess if the right hand side is a polynomial, a particular solution is a polynomial. This is our guess. And it turns out that indeed, we can find coefficients A0, A1, and A2 such that this is a particular solution of this. However, it is not that simple to guess correctly. General recommendations will be discussed in a moment. Okay. So like hypothetically, if it were equal to t cubed, I'm guessing we would probably include like plus a three t cubed. Well, again, yes and no. Here we have three cases. But once again, let me skip what is written here. We are about to jump into the general case. Okay, sounds good. Now, part two. Let us consider the following general case. The right-hand side of our equation is the product of two things. A polynomial and E 
to alpha t. The question is how to find a particular solution. There are three cases. In order to distinguish, we look at alpha first. Well, question is, what is alpha? In order to find alpha, you look at the E component only. Alpha is the coefficient in front of T. For example, going back to our problem, that we just discussed, there is no e here. Means e to zero power. But zero can be rewritten as zero times t. So the right hand side of this equation can be rewritten as t squared times e to zero times t, which means in this particular case, alpha is zero. Is another example, e to t. There is nothing in front of t means one times t. Alpha is one. Over here, alpha is two. Over here, alpha is three. So we start with alpha. Here's what we do next. Next step, find the characteristic polynomial. And now there are three cases. If alpha is not a solution of the characteristic equation, we guess our particular solution as e to alpha t. Know that this e component is a copy of this times the general polynomial of the same degree as the given polynomial. Case two. Alpha is one of two distinct solutions of the characteristic equation. In this case, psi of t is same thing as before times t. Lastly, if alpha is the only solution of the characteristic equation, which means a repeated root, we multiply the whole construction by t squared. For example, let us go back to this. As we discussed, in this case, alpha is zero. Characteristic polynomial is r squared plus r plus one. Zero is not a root of this polynomial, therefore it's case one. Particular solution is this only because there is no E over here, alpha is zero. It's exactly what we have here. So here polynomial of second degree, therefore psi is some polynomial of degree two. To the contrast, please take a look at example number 2a and b. Note that in both cases, characteristic polynomial is same. However, in a alpha is one, it is not a root of this polynomial. Therefore, this is case one. In b, alpha is two. It is one of two distinct roots. Therefore, it's case two. And now compare psi in A and in B. Since in A we have case one, psi is, we copy the E component without change, and multiplied by the general polynomial of degree zero, by a zero. Here in B, not only we multiply e to two t, we just copy e to two t by a zero, 
But in addition, we multiply the whole construction by t because this is case two, because alpha is two, which is one of two distinct roots of this polynomial. So let us go back to A. Once again, step one, identify alpha. Alpha in our case is one. Next step, write down characteristic polynomial. Find its roots. These are two linearly independent particular solutions of the corresponding homogeneous equation. The right hand side is zero. Therefore, this is the general solution of this homogeneous equation. Next step, find a particular solution of the given equation. Well, according to our recommendations, since one is not a root of this polynomial, this is case one, we guess our particular solution as this. It's over here. So once again, let us go over details. In order to come up with this, we copy the e portion. Here, e to chip. Here, e to chip. But what do we do with this polynomial? Well, note that there is nothing in front of e. Means we have one. One is a polynomial. It's a polynomial of degree zero. Therefore, over here, we write down the general polynomial of degree zero. What is the general polynomial of degree zero? It's a zero. It's exactly what is written here. So, psi of t is a zero times e to t. This is a particular solution of our equation. In order to find a zero, we plug in this into the left-hand side of our equation. So we replace y by psi, y prime by psi prime, and y prime prime by psi prime prime. Now, the derivative of this is same thing. Second derivative is again same thing. This is psi prime prime. This is psi prime. This is psi. We simplify this expression. We collect like terms. The result is negative 2a0 e to t. This is the left hand side of our equation. But the left hand side should be equal to the right hand side. So this should be equal to e to t. Cancel out e to t. The resulting equation is negative 2a0, which is over here, is equal to 1. Divide both sides by negative 2. The result falls. a0 is negative 1 half. So particular solution, we just replace a0 by this, is over here. This is a particular solution of our equation. This is the general solution of the corresponding homogeneous equation. Therefore, their sum, this plus this, which is over here, is the general solution of the given equation. Folks, any questions here? How did you find the um, a to the zero? Oh, it's, it's, sorry, psi t equals a zero e to the t. Can you like yes. just go over that again? Yeah, Thank yeah. You. So, so excellent question. Let us go back to recommendations. Here are recommendations. Psi is either of this form or of this form or of this form. First of all, I claim that we use formula number one. Why? Because alpha in our case is one. 
one is not a root of this polynomial. So it's case one. But why all of a sudden the whole construction becomes just a zero? Well, let's take a look at the following. Over here in parentheses, we have the general polynomial of the same degree as the polynomial in front of E. Now, let us see what you have in front of E. Nothing. Nothing means the coefficient in front of E is 1. And 1 is a polynomial of degree zero. So in case A, over here we have the general polynomial of degree zero. And the general polynomial of degree zero means all T components disappear and what is left is just A0. So in total we have A0 times E to T. So if the degree of the polynomial on the right side was anything else, you would have to add like more than just a to zero, a zero, right? Yes. So if, for example, over here we have second degree polynomial, here we have the general polynomial of degree two. It was done over here. Here is the general polynomial of degree two because here we have t square. Make sense? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Um. Why did you eliminate e to the t? Um. Like, how were you able to eliminate e to the t? Yes. Another excellent question. So, remember what is psi of t? Psi of t is a particular solution. What does it mean? A particular solution. Particular solution means the following. You replace y everywhere by psi. You take derivatives, you simplify, and after that, the result is the right-hand side. So, first, let us replace y everywhere by psi and simplify. If we replace y everywhere by psi, we get this. After all simplifications, the left-hand side becomes this. This is the left-hand side. The left-hand side should be equal to the right-hand side, which is e to t. So this is equal to this. We cancel out e to t. We get exactly what is written here. Was that your question? Yes, thank you so much. Other questions? This process is only to solve when uh, the uh, when the equation is equal to uh, e to t, right? Because the past one was just when you have a, I guess, uh, or just a variable. Well, if I understand your question correctly, in which case we can apply the method of judicious guessing. Answer is the right hand side should be of the form polynomial times e. In part Three, in addition, we will multiply by either cosine or sine. But this will be discussed in part three. Was that your question? Yeah, thank you. Other questions? So is our final solution to that example, is it still just a general solution because we have the two constants? Yes. What is written here is the general solution because we use this formula over here. The general solution is the sum of two pieces. General solution of the corresponding homogeneous, it's over here, plus particular solution of the given non-homogeneous, it's over here. So this is the general solution. Okay, thank you. All right, next. Let us discuss B. In B, Alpha, which is equal to two, is one of the two distinct roots of this polynomial. Therefore, this is case two. 
in case chu we multiply the whole construction by t it's exactly what we have here so compare a where we have a0 e to t and b where in addition we multiply this construction by t a0 we copy e to 2t know that instead of e to t we have e to 2t so we put here e to 2t and in addition we multiply the whole construction by t then we take first derivative product true we take second derivative product true and then we plug in this this and this into the left hand side of our equation it's done here so we replace psi prime prime by this done we replace psi prime by this done and we replace psi by this done we factor out common term we expand parentheses we collect like terms here is the result so it's over here this is the left hand side of our equation but the right hand side of our equation it's over here is e to 2t this is equal to this we cancel out the common term e to 2t we get 3a0 is equal to 1 divide both sides by 3 here is a0 one third lastly we replace a0 here by one third this is a particular solution of our given equation therefore this is the general solution folks any questions here so can you go over the how we get those three rules I'm talking about the, the conditions, you know, like if this, then, yeah, these three. You know, how, how do we come across these rules? Sorry, how, how do we like derive this or? So, here is why we need to split into cases. Let me go back to example number one. Know that at some point, in order to find A0, A1, and A2, we should solve this system of linear equations. Know that some systems of linear equations are inconsistent, means do not have solutions. So we multiply this either by one or by t or by t square in order to make sure that a resulting system of linear equations is consistent was that a question yes sir thank you other questions i'm kind of uh, confused on the part where uh, uh how do you know when you go to like uh, a zero plus a one t like uh, if we have uh, like what decides that here is the answer this polynomial has same degree as the given polynomial this is the answer for example over here we have second degree polynomial psi of t is the general polynomial of same degree second degree over here there is nothing in front of e means one it, yeah one okay, yeah. is a polynomial of zero degree here we have the general polynomial of zero degree a zero let me jump into this example over here we have a polynomial of degree one and here we have the general polynomial of degree one. Does this make sense? Yes, thank you. Other questions? I had a question at the end of example B. All right, let us go back to this. Yes. Yeah, everything makes sense up until you write the general solution. So how did you um, 
I'm pretty sure we covered this already, but how did you find the general solution once we know what psi of t is? Yes, so we go back to section 2.3. The general solution of non-homogeneous equation is the sum of two pieces. General solution of the corresponding homogeneous, it's exactly what is written here. This is the general solution of the corresponding homogeneous plus particular solution of the given non-homogeneous. This is a particular solution of the given non-homogeneous. Was that a question? Yeah, that, that makes sense. Now let us discuss two other examples. Please take a look at this. Characteristic polynomial is r squared minus 4 r plus 4. Alpha is 2. 2 is a repeated root of this polynomial. Therefore, this is case 3. So, first we find the general solution of the corresponding homogeneous. In order to do that, we write down two particular linearly independent solutions, and then we multiply this by C1, multiply this by C2, and add together. This is the general solution of the corresponding homogeneous. Next step, find a particular solution of the given non-homogeneous. Here is how we do it. As we discussed, alpha is 2, which is a repeated root of this polynomial. Therefore, this is case 3. Particular solution is, we copy the E portion, it's same thing. We multiply e to 2t by the general polynomial of degree 0, which is a 0. No, that there is nothing in front of e means 1. 1 is a polynomial of degree 0. So here we have the general polynomial of degree 0. Lastly, we multiply a 0 times e to 2t by t square because this is case three. After that, we take first derivative of this work is here. We take second derivative of this work is here. And then we plug in this, this, and this into the left hand side of our equation. Here is work. So here is the left hand side of our equation. We replace psi prime prime, psi prime, and psi by these three expressions. Done. We factor out common term. We expand parentheses. We collect like terms. This, which is over here, is the left hand side of our equation. But the left hand side should be equal to the right hand side. Cancel out E. Here is the result. Divide both sides by 2. A0 is 1 half. We replace A0 by 1 half here. Here is a particular solution. Therefore, this is the general solution of our equation because what is written here is the sum of two pieces. The general solution of the corresponding homogeneous and particular solution of the given non homogeneous equation. Folks, any questions here? I have a question. So, when you found the, the CE to the 2T and the C2T to the E2T, how did you, why did you find the or why does the second y2 equal to t e to the 2t instead of just e to the 2t? Excellent question. Let us go back to section 2.2, a linear equations with constant coefficients. No, 
that there are three cases. Our case is case two. We have a repeated root. If we have a repeated root, two particular linearly independent solutions are e to rx, and then e to rx times x. And here is the general solution. It's exactly what we have here. E to RT and then E to RT times T. Was that your question? Yes, thank you. Last example. Please take a look at this. Alpha is three. Characteristic polynomial is R square minus three R plus two. It is easy to check that three is not a root of this polynomial. Therefore, it's case one. In order to create psi, we copy the e portion and replace this polynomial of degree one by the general polynomial of degree one. After that, we find first derivative, work is here, product true, we find second derivative, work is here, product true. And then we are replace y prime prime, y prime and y by these three expressions. Done. We factor out E, we expand parentheses, we collect like terms. This is the left-hand side of our equation. But the left-hand side should be equal to the right-hand side. We cancel out E. Here is the result. This, which is over here, is equal to 1 plus T. Because of this. And now, in which case the left-hand side is identically equal to the right-hand side, 2a1 should be equal to the coefficient in front of t. It's equation number one. And then 2a0 plus 3a1 is equal to one. This is equation number two. We solve the system. Here is a1, here is a0. We are replace over here a0 and a1 by negative one over four and by one half the result False. Folks, any questions? Uh, can you explain what you did uh, on the base simplification, of the the two a equals one? Or like, how'd you go from the two a, two a one t plus uh, and then parentheses two a zero plus three a one? How'd you go from that to the one at the bottom? Are you talking about this? Yes. So your question is, how do we get this, or how we go from no. here to here? Yeah, from yeah, that one. Yes. So, excellent question. Look, we want to find A0 and A1 such that the left-hand side is identically equal to 1 plus T. Note that if 2A1 is 1 and this is also 1, indeed, the left-hand side is identically equal to this. Because if 2a1 is 1, we get 1 times t plus 1. It's 1 plus t. So this should be 1. It's exactly what is written here. This should also be 1. It's exactly what is written here. Done. All right, thank you. Other questions? Is the general solution not listed? Yes, the general solution, here we have only a particular solution. In order to find the general solution, we find roots of this polynomial. Roots of this polynomial are 1 and 2. So, the general solution of the corresponding homogeneous equation is C1 e to t plus C2 e to 2t. Therefore, the general solution is C1 e to t plus C2 e to 2t plus psi of t. Uh, can you just go over how you would have done it if 
if the discriminant was negative if discriminant is negative then we follow similar procedure so we use the quadratic formula we simplify r we write r in the standard form we identify alpha and beta and then we use this formula was that your question yes sir thank you all right now part three please take a look at this example on the right hand side we have sine of 2t what do we do here is the procedure step one looking at this write down the corresponding auxiliary equation in order to do that we leave the left hand side without change and we replace sine of 2t by e to 2i t for example if instead of 2 we have say 7 here we have e to 7 i t here's what is important we do not rewrite this as this we write down a totally different new equation this is given step one write down a new equation we do not rewrite this as this these are two different things two different equations we write down a new equation this one after that we solve this equation and then i'll show you at the end we use a particular solution of this new equation in order to extract a particular solution of this one you may ask my question why do we have a relationship between this equation and this equation the answer is there is a relationship between these two equations thanks to Euler's formula. Euler's formula is E to I W T is cosine of W T plus I sine W T. Note that according to Euler's formula, sine of 2 T is the imaginary part of e to 2 i t in short if we have this step one write down the corresponding auxiliary equation replacing sine of 2 t by e to 2 i t and then use the previous theory in order to find a particular solution of this question is can we use the previous theory the answer is yes note that over here in these recommendations in these formulas i've never said that alpha should be a real it turns out that if instead of a real number we have a complex number we can apply same formulas so let us go back to our case note that over here alpha is 2i it's a complex number so alpha is 2i next step write down the corresponding characteristic equation we replace y prime prime by r square and 4y by 4. move 4 to the right take square root of both sides r is plus minus 2i 
So, alpha is 2i. Conclusion, alpha is one of two distinct roots of t. This is case two. Therefore, a particular solution of this equation is we copy the e portion as before. We multiply e by a0, which is the general polynomial of degree 0. And since this is case 2, we multiply the whole construction by t. Next, in order to find a0, we replace y here and y here by phi. We find first derivative of phi using the product rule. We find the second derivative of phi using the product rule what is here. And then replace phi prime prime and phi by this expression and this expression. Done. Factor out common term, collect like terms. Here is the left hand side of our equation. It's over here. But the left hand side should be equal to the right hand side of our equation. Remember, the right hand side is this. So this should be equal to this. Cancel out E. The result falls. Conclusion. A0 is 1 divided by 4i. So if we replace A0 by 1 divided by 4i, the resulting expression is a particular solution of our auxiliary equation. But remember, I said that last step is to extract a particular solution of the given equation from a particular solution of the auxiliary equation. How can we do that? Well, now we have to apply a sequence of steps. Once again, according to what is written here, A0 is 1 divided by 4i. Next step let us simplify 1 divided by 4i. Let us rewrite 1 divided by 4i in the standard form. Standard form of a complex number is alpha plus beta i. 1 divided by 4i, which is over here, is not of the standard form because we divide by i. So in order to rewrite it in the standard form, multiply top and bottom by i, done. 1 times i is i. i times i is i square. Since i is square root of negative 1, i square is negative 1. And what is written here? can be rewritten as negative 1 over 4 times i. This is of the standard form because it can be rewritten as alpha plus beta i. In our case, alpha is 0, beta is negative 1 over 4. Now, let us replace this a0 by this. It's exactly what is written here. Here is the original expression. Replace a0 by this. Here is the result. However, the whole expression over here is not in the standard form again, because we have i over here and i over here. What do we do? We apply Euler's formula again. Let me remind you Euler's formula. Euler's formula is e to i w t is equal to cosine of w t plus i sine of w t. So 
In our case, W is equal to 2. We apply Euler's formula in order to jump from here to here. Then we expand parentheses, done. I times I is negative one. Negative times negative is positive. And now we switch positions. We put a real part first and imaginary part after that. So now pi is written in the standard form. Real part plus imaginary part times i. Question is, how do we extract a particular solution of the given equation from this particular solution of the auxiliary equation? Answer is, since the right-hand side is sine, a particular solution of this equation is the imaginary part of the particular solution of this equation. Imaginary part is this. So particular solution of the given equation is this. It's copy. To the contrast, please compare the problem that we just discussed with the second example we on the right hand side, we have cosine. A particular solution of this equation is the real part of pi, which is this. Folks, any questions here? So for the last part, why would you prefer the, to write down the imaginary solution? Like for the example, like sine of 2t, why would it be negative 1 fourth 2 cosine 2t instead of the other half? Like, how do you tell which one it's supposed to be? Yes, so excellent question. Let us go back to the recommendations. Let us read what is written here. If the right-hand side of our given equation has sine, a particular solution of this equation is imaginary part of pi. If the right-hand side of the given equation has cosine, a particular solution of this equation is a real part of pi. So going back to our equation, the right-hand side is psi. This is case two particular solution of this equation is imaginary part of pi. It's exactly what we have here. Imaginary part is this. This is a particular solution of our given equation. Over here, the right hand side is cosine. Therefore, a particular solution of this is the real part of pi. Did I answer the question? Yeah, it does. Is there a reason for that? Yes. So the reason for that is the following. Please take a look at this formula. If we replace the E portion by this and expand parentheses, you'll get the following. Cosine times polynomial plus i sine times polynomial. So whatever comes with sine is imaginary part. Whatever comes with cosine is a real part. That's it. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you so much. Other questions? Uh, can, can you explain on uh, Euler's formula how you're able to like uh, just go from the sine to the E? Basically here, I give you a shortcut. If we have sine of 2T, we replace sine of 2T by E, 2IT. If instead of two, we have say five, here we put five. So step one, write down the corresponding auxiliary equation. 
And in order to do that, replace either sine or cosine by e to the power wti, where w is the coefficient in front of t. Was that your question? Uh, yes. So if we already use cosine, uh, uh, it, how, it would work the same way, right? Exactly. Exactly. But then the difference will be only at the end. If instead of sine, we have cosine, in order to find a particular solution, we extract the real part. That's all right. All right, that's always going to happen, right? Like when you're given uh, to uh, equals to sine, you're going to use the imaginary and for cosine, it'll be real. Yes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I have a question. So you know how at first we were, whenever we were working with the sine and cosine, and then we said that the psi was the imaginary part of the um, thing or whatever. So then do we have to keep doing more with that psi that we just found, like plugging it back in? Or is that just the answer? So like whenever we're writing the general solution or whatever, if this came up, so it would still be like, C1 times something, C2 times something, then just plus the psi? Or do we have to do anything else with this psi in the old equations to finish our solution? Talking about the general solution, we apply absolutely the same approach. General solution is general solution of homogeneous plus particular solution of non-homogeneous. Absolutely. Okay, and the thing we just found, that psi, that is the particular solution, there's nothing Please distinguish between two particular solutions. We do not use this particular solution as the final answer. This is not psi, this is phi. This is a particular solution of the auxiliary equation. Psi is over here. So in this formula, you replace psi by this not by this. Was that your question? Yes, yes. Any other questions? Professor, so um, if we want to find a general solution, that's going to be sine 2x plus cosine 2x and uh, plus the thing we just solved for, right? Yes. So in this particular case, the general solution is C1 sine of 2t plus C2 cosine of 2t plus this. Okay, thank you. Other questions? How did you get the C1 sine 2 and C2 cosine 2t? Good question. Let us go back to this section. In our case, it's case 3. Note that over here r is plus minus 2i. Plus minus 2i can be rewritten as 0 plus minus 2i. So in our case, alpha is a 0, beta is 2. e to 0 power is 1. So what is left is cosine 2t and sine 2t. Therefore, the general solution of the corresponding homogeneous is C1 cosine 2t plus C2 sine 2t. Was that your question? Yes, yes, sorry, thank you. Other questions? Uh, professor, I don't understand how you made the uh, sine of 2t into e to the 2it because uh, the auxiliary equation, it's, it's like the cosine plus i sine. You cannot like algebraically change the equation to only sine. So how did you make that? Once again, at the beginning, I said that we do not rewrite this as this. We write down a new equation. It is impossible to jump from this to this algebraically. Let me give you the following example. Remember, when we discussed section 2.2, .2, I said that we do not rewrite this as this. It's impossible. This is a differential equation. This is a quadratic equation. What is written here is an auxiliary equation that helps us 
to find the general solution of this. Same is here. We do not rewrite this as this. This is an auxiliary equation that helps us to find a particular solution of this. Make sense? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Let us finish our discussion of section 2.5. Please take a look at this example. So, step one, we replace cosine by e to i t. And then we leave this portion without change. t times e to t times e to i t can be rewritten as t times e to the power one plus i, the whole thing times t. So in order to find a particular solution of this, first we write this auxiliary new equation replacing cosine by e to i t the right hand side if we replace cosine by e to i t becomes this which is exactly what is written here next in order to find a particular solution of this first identify alpha alpha in our case is one plus i no that one plus i is not a root of the characteristic equation. Therefore, it's case one. Particular solution of this equation is we copy the e portion without change. We replace t, which is a polynomial of degree one by the general polynomial of degree one and we do not multiply this expression by t or by t square because alpha is not a root of this equation. After that, we take first derivative of pi, work is here, we apply the product rule, we take second derivative of phi, again, work is here, we apply the product rule and then replace y prime prime, y prime and y here by this expression, this expression and this expression. Done after all simplifications. A left hand side is supposed to be equal to the right hand side of our equation we cancel out the e portion and come up with this system again work is here we solve this system we get a1 a0 and then we replace a1 and a0 in our formula for phi by these two expressions we apply euler formula in order to jump from here to here, we simplify again, and it turns out that particular solution of our given equation is equal to this. Folks, this problem is technically really, really difficult. On tests, I will not give you anything of this level of complexity. However, I strongly recommend you to go over this solution and which is even better, try to solve this problem by yourself and compare with the posted solution. It's a good practice. Folks, now questions. Oh, uh, Professor? Yes. So can you scroll up to where you, um, yeah, can you keep scrolling up? So you, I understand how you got the T E to the I T E T, right? I get how you got that whole equation. Uh, no, uh, keep scrolling up. Yeah, right there. So I understand how you got there, right? But I don't understand 
How can you replace the original, original one with that? So, once again, this is a common question that students ask me all the time. How come that we replace cosine or sine by E? Folks, basically, I give you only a shortcut. If you ask me about theory, here is the theory. In brief, if we look at this equation and apply Euler's formula to the right hand side, on the right hand side, we will get a complex valued expression. Then, if we replace y on the left hand side by phi, we will get complex valued expression again. And we know that two complex numbers on the left and on the right are identically equal if and only if a real part on the left is equal to real part on the right and imaginary part on the left is equal to imaginary part on the right. But real part on the right is with cosine. Imaginary part on the right is with sine. Since left-hand side and right-hand side are equal, we basically extract a real part of this solution in order to find a particular solution of this equation and imaginary part in order to find particular solution of this equation. This is theory, but shortcut is, if you see either sine or cosine, just replace, we don't rewrite. It is impossible to rewrite sine as e to complex power, no. We just replace sine or cosine by e to the corresponding power. And the corresponding power is i t times, in this case, 2, in this case, 2, in this case, i t times 1, because the coefficient in front of t is 1. So, this and this are two totally different equations. We do not rewrite this and this. No, we write down a new equation. This one. We solve it. We find particular solution. Then, real part of this solution is a particular solution of this by theory. Does this make sense? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Fox, any other questions? Um, can you go over for um, when you find psi of t and you multiply by a0, but sometimes you multiply by a0 plus a1, so how do you know like how many to go to? Are you talking about this? Yes. Absolutely. So, please take a look at the right-hand side. What do we have in front of E? We have T. Note that T is a polynomial of degree one. This is a key. It's a polynomial of degree one. Therefore, over here, we put the general polynomial of degree one. For example, if instead of T, we have say number five, Number five is a polynomial of degree zero. Therefore, over here, we don't put this portion. We put just a zero. Or if instead of t, we have, say, t squared over here, we put the general polynomial of degree two. A zero plus a one t plus a two t squared. Does this answer your question? Yes, thank you. Other questions? Can you explain how we got A1T again, like how we know to have A1T? Uh, over here? Yes. Okay. So here's once again. Please take a look at 
these recommendations. So, suppose on the right hand side we have some polynomial. Step one, determine the degree of this polynomial. Then over here we write down the general polynomial of the same degree. Same degree. For example, here we have a polynomial of degree 2. Here we have the general polynomial of degree 2. Next example. There is nothing in front of E here. Means the number 1. The number 1 is a polynomial of degree 0. And over here, we have the general polynomial of degree 0, A0. Next example. Over here, we have a polynomial of degree 1. And here we have the general polynomial of degree 1. Next example. Over here. We have, over here, we have t. It's a polynomial of degree 1. Therefore, here we have the general polynomial of degree 1. I understand now. Thank you. All right. Now, let us discuss the following. By the way, over here, if you click on PR, I posted solutions for problems from all tests. Let us click on these as hard problems. And let us scroll down. So over here, you can see sine plus cosine. What do we do in this case? If we have the sum of two terms or the difference of two terms, in order to solve this equation, solve first two separate equations. The left-hand side is equal to sine, which is over here. And then the left-hand side is equal to cosine, which is over here. Find particular solution of this. Find particular solution of this. A particular solution of this is the sum of particular solutions of these two equations thanks to linearity. Moreover, note that in both cases, the auxiliary equation is same. We just replace either sine or cosine by e to i x, e to i x. Therefore, in this particular case, in order to find a particular solution, we find a particular solution of this and then add up particular solution of this, which is imaginary part, and particular solution of this, which is a real part. It's exactly what is written here. Particular solution of our given equation is a real part of phi and imaginary part of phi. To the contrast, please take a look at this. We have sine square. If we have sine or cosine to some power, we cannot replace sine by e. First, we use trig identity. Sine is equal to this. And now we consider two separate equations. A left-hand side is equal to one-half equation number one. And left-hand side is equal to this, equation number two. We find a particular solution of this. We find a particular solution of this. It's written here. This is a particular solution of this. And this is a particular solution of this. And then particular solution of the given equation is the sum of particular solutions. Folks, any questions? In the problem where now we're finding a particular solution with the cosine 2x over 2, is it now e to the ix over 2? Cosine 2x over 2, 
are you talking about this? Yeah. So in this case, we replace cosine of 2x by e to 2ix. Here 2, therefore here 2. Okay, thank you.